I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin. Welcome to Consider This, the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider the news of the day. Now, and the news of the day undoubtedly has been the resignation of Dr. Mazli Malik as Education Minister. His resignation took effect today after helming the post for nearly one year and nine months. Now, in making sense of the noise surrounding this story, let's break down some of the key elements. Let's begin with why he resigned. Has that been sufficiently explained, Sherrod? Well, Melissa, I think, you know, when we look at some of the discussions around Masli Malik's resignation, uh, uh, what is clear is that he was seen as a liability, a political liability for the coalition because of the kind of controversies he seemed to have uh, precipitated in some of the initiatives he put together. Now, whether that was fair, uh, that objectively speaking, uh, these were bad moves or bad policies, I think is a matter for deeper discussion. Mm. But what's clear is that uh, when it came to the kind of controversies generated for the Pakatan government, still not yet two years uh, you know, in that role, uh, he clearly is uh, one of those names that comes to the fore. So well, one of those names, Sherrod, but definitely not the only name. I mean, it would be completely unfair to blame Masli alone for underperformance, given that there were many others at his level, many other ministers whose performances were not up to mark either. Now, I think the question to be asked here is whether Masli was the fall guy for the mistakes as a whole, of, of the government as a whole, whether he was the fall guy. Yeah, so uh, the two aspects of this, one is whether it was underperformance that was generating uh, the, the controversies, or rather it was the kind of moves that he made, uh, uh, either read as misplaced priorities or read as a kind of cultural politics that some segments of the country were not happy with. And I, and I say this, you know, advisedly, I mean, the, Malaysia is made up of different communities, different publics, not all racial in nature, more ideological values and so on and so forth, that have been, I think, weighing in on the question of where they want the country to go. And they sure. don't always agree. So certainly the controversy isn't about underperformance. It's really about the value systems that we have. Well, I think one of the, th uh, the threads we should pick at in the conversation around um, Masli Malik's resignation is also, you know, looking back at why he was chosen in the first place. Understanding to not the Mahathir's uh, considerations or thought process when it came to picking a Minister of Education. And I think it's important, I, I want to kind of uh, point to Wong Sai Wan uh, in The Star who wrote an op-ed um, and he quoted, he said that um, while previous education ministers were seasoned politicians or senior, uh, senior university vice chancellors, the reality is that Masli Male was merely a low-ranked lecturer without even the administrative experience of heading a department or a faculty. R right. These I are the words of Dr. Wong Sai Wan. Well, I'm actually not Wong Sai Wan, Wong Chun oh, Wai. Sorry, excuse me, Wong, Wong Chun Wai. So that Wong we'll need to correct Wai. that uh, quote there. But the important thing is what Wong Chun Wai of the star it points to is this idea that, uh, and it's a problematic one, who is really qualified uh, to be the Minister of Education? Yes. Melissa, you know, it was said uh, by a very young activist, uh, you know, some a year or so ago, everybody believes uh, they can be the Minister of Education, do a much better job really? than the Education Minister. And I think that's true. I mean, because uh, education is, is very close to the hearts of many Malaysians, uh, everybody thinks it's common sense that, uh, that, that is required to do the job. And more importantly, is people don't recognize how complex uh, the education system is. Yes. And I think this is one of the things that isn't uh, understood. The complexity and much of uh, Masli Malik's work uh, was in those areas that the public doesn't actually see. So they Correct. see the big ticket items, you know, Khat and Jawi issue, they, they look at the, the black, the black shoe, shoe shoes issue. or the mm -hmm. swimming pool issue, but they don't know perhaps uh, some of the issues around uh, the food program for the kids or uh, the question of teachers and their administrative loads or stopping uh, exams for the first three years of education, introducing play or love, as you like to put it, back into the education system. All these things really does aren't things that most of the public focuses on when they think about the education system so well, yeah. what is it that the public focuses on and I think that you know broad policy in improving the education system schools and how it feeds into universities that is what the public is looking for and I have to say that this you know what 
that's what's needed and it's been sorely lacking during the tenure of Dr. Mazliman. Uh, well, Dr. Okay, Mazliman. Let's go back to the Wang Chun Wai quote again. Thank well, you for he, yeah, no worries. <laughs> you know, what, what I think uh, Wang Chun Wai was looking at, and, and I don't know if he's correct in this, is it somebody with administrative uh, experience that is necessary or is it somebody with a, a sense of how to reform what the Prime Minister called and his cabinet, I guess, would endorse as the broken nature of our education system. Right. Somebody needed to change. The question was, Mate, remember, put him up put himself up Correct. for that role first before he uh, you know he stepped away from it and then put Mazli Malik there was he the wrong choice uh, Wong Chun Wai seemed to think that uh, you know he should have put a man that was more directed towards issues of you know um, the industrial revolution 4.0 you know and that rhetoric rather than somebody who was much more cultural in his approach and philosophical in his approach well, to education if that was in fact the intention of the not they're saying that you know he he knows the country needs engineers, needs uh, digital skills to keep up, to future-proof um, the young for the fu for future jobs. Then why was it that Mahathir put a man who was, you know, um, who had a penchant for culture, had a penchant for religion, into the post of the education minister? Why pick? this man for the job in the first place and I think that that's a question we need to consider but also uh, what should be the considerations of picking an education minister that's one that many people have started to weigh in on in fact if we ask passes uh, Kuala Trunganu MP Ahmad um, Amzad Hashim the next education must be a Malay Muslim so the think? education minister's <laughs> identity for pass look PAS has its own take on governance uh, in a Muslim-majority country. It believes that you know key leadership roles have to be held by Muslim Muslims. And that's a very limited and identity-based approach to the question of governance. Because beyond the question of, you know, is, let's say, it's assumed everybody, every candidate is Malay Muslim, then what? Mm -hmm. What else would go into the mix to make sure? Now, you remember PAS is driven by its own theocratic ideas sure. around you know the Muslim Ummah and all these kinds of things. So put that aside. For us uh, who don't necessarily subscribe to that vision, what is really the next step? What exactly is the pr uh, Prime Minister going to do? Because this is the closed door kind of process, right? Yeah, it's he not like we get some... to vote. It's not like <laughs> we, we get, get to vote, vote well, on who the next education minister will be. Yeah, and I wonder to what extent this is going to be a collective decision, right? Mm. Whether the cabinet is going to sit down and think, okay, uh, if this was a major fail for them, how are they going to rectify it? Because it's not just simply choosing a successor. It's going to be somebody who's going to prove that this government knows what it's doing. And I think that is the larger challenge challenge for the Pakatan uh, Harapan cabinet to show that it's really got its act together. Well, I have to also remind uh, everyone that you know the, the post of education minister is a highly politicized one, one that is so, so much more compared to other uh, ministerial positions, right? But you know, if you take a look at in the past, the education minister's post was regarded as a stepping stone to you know a higher position, bigger positions. In fact, even a prime ministership. So you saw that Tun Abdul Razak, Tun uh, Hussein On. Ab, uh, Ab, Abdullah Badawi, Anwar Ibrahim, Najib Raza, Hisham Muni Hussein, they've all had this position before. So again, all eyes on who could be um, the next Minister of Education. Yeah, so the problem has been with that approach and that political culture mm. that the Barisan National bred over five decades is that it's made the post extraordinarily political, right? And the politicization of our education system and the constraints that come with it are what are politicians going to do uh, in that position? Will they take bold measures or will they be concerned Conservative? Will they pander to interest groups or will they think about the long-term interests of the nation as a whole? These are the things that uh, can come up when you th think about the politicization of the post. Now, mm. moving forward, are we going to get uh, non-political Lead, non-political leadership in the education ministry, are we going to get more of the same? Well, okay, sources from within Bursatu have hinted um, at Datuk Sri Mustafa Muhammad, or Tokpa, as he's affectionately known, as the party's favourite among possible candidates to fill the post. I think some, uh, the same source who had spoken to the media also said that Datuk Marzuki Yahya, currently Deputy Foreign Minister and Bursatu Secretary General, could be considered as Masli's replacement. But uh, looking at an online poll by the Malaysian Insight, they found that more than half of the 1,500 respondents had picked Nurul Iza Anwar ahead of Tokpa. So, all interesting choices, right? Yeah, so I guess it's not going to be a popularity contest, or will it be? I think is the question we'll need to ask uh, the, uh, the, the leadership when it does, in fact, announce who is going to be the successor to mm. Masli Malik. But, but more importantly, you know, uh, are we, are the, are the choices constrained by 
by party political realities. Does this have to be a Basatu representative? Does it have to be somebody who's now a parliamentarian? Can it be, uh, uh, you know, somebody brought through Senate? Remember, Daim Zanudin was a senator brought into cabinet. All kinds of options. The question is, would this cabinet, Dr. Mahathir's cabinet, in fact choose uh, a technocrat? Somebody's not political okay, to do that's, this job. Okay, that's interesting. And I wonder whether we can turn our like, look to our neighbour Indonesia uh, when we are considering a choice of Minister of Education. I mean, Indonesia, uh, President Jokowi just recently uh, picked uh, Nadim Makarim from Dego, who... 35 years old, Harvard educated, absolutely no background in the uh, in academia, but uh, one that is in you know, a digital entrepreneur in this new age. I think it could be a, a, an interesting one to keep tabs yeah, on. Yeah, but it's also true that you know you could be a very successful uh, digital entrepreneur, not necessarily a very successful uh, politician. Because you, remember, you, with your CEO, you're basically the dictator. <laughs> now, if you're a politician, you're going to have to include all kinds of stakeholders. You're going to have to be consultative. Will will that person be able to do that? coming with that corporate background. I'm not sure. It's a tough, tough, tough uh, choice. Right. All right, we're going to continue our focus on the Ministry of Education after this. So stay tuned to consider this.